Hey guys doing? This is Neil, the art instructor at masterpaintingnow.com. The link's in the description. And also at Udemy and top set or bestseller of how to draw awesome figures on Amazon. That's my book. And here I'm going to show you guys how I go about drawing a comment page. And this is going from the, like without any pre-sketching or anything. This is all figuring out as I go along. So you're seeing everything in the raw. You're seeing everything as I'm doing in my head. The first thing I knew I wanted to establish was I want, I want cloud, which is the male character and Skylar, the female character, both on their op phase. And the op phase are a, 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 fan, a fantasy creature that I invented. They're basically kind of like a gorilla horse sort of. Um, so here, uh, first thing I, I realized is like, you know, I'm like, whoa, I'm drawing her way too big in comparison to the oat fake, because the oat fakes are actually quite large. If you've seen the, the pictures of my comic, you'll see how, how large they are. It's a free graphic novel that you can read online at endofallcomic.com. You can also just go to my website and it's there. So just click on the website in the description. Again, masterpaintingnow.com and then just go to go to my end of all end of all comic. And then there it is. So here I'm establishing is basically in the page I have, well, when I wrote the page, it's um, an establishing shot. It's to have some background and stuff like that. There's gonna be a floating, one of the floating cities in the background. And then you have them writing their Obfe. I, just, I really wanted to show how big the Obfe were. I mean, it's been established already before in the comic. You can see in a couple pages back. If you go in and read, if you haven't read the graphic novel or if you have been following it, then you already know there's been a couple times where they're, their size is really established, but I wanted to reestablish their size again. Sometimes I think it's good to just re, you know, fortify that um, back in the back in the readers' minds in case you forgot just how big they actually are. Now here, instead of drawing little like bubbles for where the words are going to be, I decided, you know what? Actually, let's just take the final font size and let's write what they're saying and put it in the page. That way I know those words have to be in the page and I need to draw my images around those. Uh, this just gives me a more accurate look and I, I don't know why I put it justified to the left. It's always supposed to be justified to the middle. I guess you can do your comic however you want, but typically it's justified in the middle. But anyway, so I'm like, that's better because now I have the exact size in my mind, you know, what area the word bubbles will take up. Because here, here I have the actual real size of the text. I, I find that's a little bit easier to work with. Um, but basically, I was like, you know what? Them talking back and forth, I think I really want to show their emotions. And so you think about the whole entire layout of the page itself. And I also think about this while I'm writing the page as well. So when I'm writing the page, that is in, in Word, and I'm, in, I'm, I'm visualizing the story in my head. And I've already wrote the, I already wrote the novel for End of All a long time ago. And I started working on the, the graphic novel a long time ago lost a lot of the pages and then had to, you know, repick it back up again. Um, didn't have enough time, got too busy with so much stuff that I have, um, two different artists to help me work, work on it. And, uh, I really like the, the last artist now that I've been working with and, uh, he's on vacation right now. So, um, I decided, you know what, I want to, I want to work on this page and I wasn't going to draw the little fl her little fluffy there. But anyway, um, if you're not familiar with the, uh, with the, the graphic novel, please check it out. It's really, really cool. I think you'll dig it if you like graphic novels. Even if you don't like graphic novels and you just like stories in general, I really think you'll like the story. And uh, it's got a lot of humor in it and stuff like that. So, and if anyone, if anyone of you guys have, you know, read any of my work, then you know kind of like what my humor is already like anyway. And uh, for example, my, my novel, which was a bestseller for a while, uh, it's end of, not end of all, um, Bending Nature, a new kind of vampire novel is the full name of it. It's under my pseudonym and my also my girlfriend's pseudonym, Samantha Stone. So uh, definitely check it out. It's pretty cool. Um, I mean, a lot of people like it, so it's got really good reviews. But anyway, so uh, when I'm when I'm thinking about the, the writing, right, I'm visualizing the story in my head already. So I kind of already know, you know, what the scene should look like. But I need to figure out how do I translate that scene, which is a movie in my head, into still images and only a couple still images that really capture the essence of that scene. And sometimes that's difficult to do, uh, but basically I already knew that the essence of the scene is really just um, them talking. And so I really wanted to establish, like I said, the size of the Obfe. And uh, here I actually draw his hand um, facing with the, I realized, oh wait, his thumb has to be facing away from us. And that looks kind of cool. I kind of like that. Um, 
And so we're actually looking at the pinky there that's closest to us. But I decided to actually flip around the other way because I really wanted I really wanted to be able to see the thumb for some reason. I don't know. I get weird like that sometimes about stuff. But um, one thing is when I'm as I'm sketching this, keep in mind this is all from imagination. I'm not looking at anything. Um, the only thing that I'm looking at is the reference for reference is how the other artists drew these characters. The, um, not not my not like Skyland stuff like that. I mean, I'm kind of looking at the way he draws Skyland stuff. Um, only because I, I, I want it to sort of have a harmony and I want it to styles to be so different. But my way of drawing is definitely different than his way of drawing. And I could try to draw exactly him, but I want to. I don't want to do that. And so instead what I'm doing is I'm like, okay, I know how I normally draw Skyla and how I would draw her now. Because I, I my style has kind of changed from when I first started this comic. I'm, I'm better now than I was then. But at the same time, I kind of want there to be this fluidity between between pages when, when I work on it versus when he works on it. And so I was like, okay, I want to sort of draw the way he draws, but also draw the way I draw. And so it's kind of like a mix um, between the two, but trying to lean more toward his style of more, which is very more manga-ish. But uh, one, one, one thing that I had a difficulty with is drawing. I have no problem drawing like gorilla type stuff because they're very much like humans. Um, and I've drawn enough gorilla type stuff for, for fantasy stuff that it's, uh, it's not difficult, but horses aren't something I necessarily, I, I like horses in general, but I don't like drawing them. It's not something I care about. I don't like pictures of horses. I've got much of horse, horse artwork. So, um, I don't have a lot of experience with drawing horses and, uh, that, that proved a little bit troublesome to me drawing this, you know, like trying to draw this kind of like from imagination with only seeing a couple images of how he draws the characters um how i first imagined these characters and how i was going to draw them um but i never i never i never got the time to do it by the time the page was ready to be posted i'm like damn it, i have to give him the script i wanted to design the characters before i gave him the script but i really i really like what he did with the characters they're really cool um that's the obfe the things they're writing but i had imagined them more in my head as kind of having more werewolf monster type heads um Pretty much he, he was on par with, you know, I gave a really detailed description of them. So he was pretty much on par with the uh, thing with, I should have described maybe the heads with, you know, as kind of more werewolf-like, but I, I forgot to describe that part. That's just what I saw in my head and I forgot to describe it. Um, but, you know, it's not, it's not too big of a deal. Um, you kind of want artists to kind of, you know, have their their freedom to do what they want. And I, I understand that as being both an artist and, the, and a writer that I like when I'm when I'm drawing for somebody else what they wrote, I like to have the freedom to kind of imagine in my head what how I want things to look. I don't want everything to be so detailed. And that way I feel I feel too restricted, you know? But anyway, so uh, he gave them horse heads, which is fine. I just imagine them more with monster type werewolf heads like in uh, Underworld or um, the old movies, Howling, the werewolf movies, or um, maybe like American Werewolf, American Werewolf in Paris. I can imagine more like that that kind of head, but he was right on, right on it with the body. I mean, did just such a good job. Is this exactly what I described and how I imagined it, them to have these upper gorilla type bodies and like a horse type, um, you know, legs. And yeah, so that's really cool. And I think he did a great job on that. Uh, the bow, you know, I'm just, I'm just basically like, okay, he, he, he designed the bow as well. That's something I didn't have time to design. And so I'm like, all right, I got to kind of stick to his design for the bow. And uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't have to draw much detail to it because it's in the background there and you're not really seeing much of it. Now I decided to change the face to, um, the angle of the face to be more of a front view, but I just kind of, I still wanted to have her face at an angle. And so I just kind of angled the angle, her whole head sideways, but she's still front, front view facing. Now what I'm trying to attempt to draw here is rolling of eyes. Now this proved to be quite difficult for me for some reason, because I, I've never really drawn that that expression of someone rolling their eyes. You know, um, it's weird because I'm very I'm very expressionate in my in my comic work, and you can see all throughout the uh, all the color pages are mine, and some of the black and white pages are mine. And so as I'm you know working on a page, you know I and if you look throughout the end of all comic book, what you're going to notice is that I do a lot of very expressive. Uh, features like you know emotions and stuff on their face i like a lot of close-ups and stuff i really like to show uh, expressions I, I think it's really cool in movies it's good in comic books and um i, I'm, I was like, kind of surprised that i'm like how come i never drawn rolling of eyes i'm like i've drawn it before 
but never like the way I wanted to draw it in this way. I've drawn it more like cutesy, like kind of rolling the eyes in a cutesy way. But I wanted her to roll her eyes in a way of saying like, whatever, you know, like totally be serious. I mean, come on, you're so retarded. That's the expression, you know, I wanted. And uh, here I am like, ah, can't get this right. And so what I end up doing, and so I'll cut to the chase here, is instead of trying to draw the eyes rolling how it might look in real life, I'm like, you know what, and how, or, or even staying true to her character, it's like, well, hey, I don't always stay true to, to character. What I mean by that is um, her eyes are big, right? Her, her actual irises and pupils are, are large. They fill up a large part of the eye. It's, it's, a, it's a manga fusion. So, you know, it's, it's more like manga in that, in that way of the bigger pupils but not quite like so huge, like some of the, uh, the cutesy stuff but anyway. So I'm like, how, how about I just do away with that altogether and for this particular expression and will it work better? Give her small, just basically show the pupils only and don't show the big O I and suddenly it worked. And you'll see that at the end there when I go with that. But yeah, I struggled with this a little bit just because it wasn't an emotion I ever drew before. Not exactly like this, at least, you know, I've, I've like I said, I've drawn the cutesy kind of eye roll, but I wanted to draw this um, more like serious eye roll and it, it, it was very problematic for me and it wastes a lot of time. And so those are the things you got to think about, you know, um, sometimes I could have, I could have took the easy route, but I had a, a, a visual in my head. I had an idea of what I wanted and I was, I'm like, I'm going to achieve that. And so that's what wasted, wasted so much time with this. Uh, the real time of how long it took to draw everything that you're going to see in this video was an hour and 15 minutes an hour to 15 to an hour and 20 minutes. That's how much time it took me to draw all of it, of what you see. And I don't even finish inking all this. So I'm um, in, in this particular thing. And so this is pretty much all I get around to doing is what you're seeing right now. Of course, I'm going to ink, I'm going to ink her and the obfe and also the face down below, but everything else I still have to ink and I still have to continue. I still have to finish sketching uh, cloud and his obfe, but uh, what, what I just did there real quickly is I set the image to you just click the little lock icon, the lock transparency icon, and then I just pick a big ink brush and pick whatever color I want, in this case, a bluish color, and then just paint over it. And it only will color if it's already a transparent, uh, a transparent layer that you're drawing on. It's only going to color what you drew on that layer, which is really cool. It's a really easy way to change the color. Um, if you don't like to draw with blue, it's an easy way to transfer it to blue. It makes, which makes, you know, the inking part a little bit easier. Sometimes I use pink, but um, I, I wanted it to be visible here on the video, so I, I use blue. Now, at this part here, um, I almost made them round, and I was like, wait a minute, duh, he's at an angle, so if they are round, they would kind of be foreshortened and look more oval. I like to add a lot of three-dimensionality things. That's why I'm adding little lines here and there to the, uh, to the leather straps to make it look like it's more 3D. But yeah, so overall, you know, even though uh, horse heads aren't something I draw a lot, you know, because I did have what he drew as kind of a reference point, you know, that helped a little bit. Um, I could have went and actually looked at some horse heads, but you know, I've looked at horse heads before, so it's not like it's nothing I never studied before. But it's just not something I draw um, really at all. So, and I've I've only probably drawn a a handful of actual horses in my in my life. Uh, but nonetheless, like I said, all animals are kind of the same. Uh, the horse head and a donkey head and a, a dog head, believe it or not, are very similar in structure to what you're drawing. You're just changing a, a couple little things here and there. I think I might eventually do a, a course on how to draw animals. I just don't know how much how much popularity there is for it, um, but we'll see. And so the inking part is pretty easy for me. Um, it, it goes very quickly. Uh, you know, Once I have the, the sketch there, I can see all the details that I want in inking, and it doesn't take me very long to actually to ink it out. Um, but yeah, so uh, one thing I, I like is that he gave each Ophé their own character. So uh, this Ophé, her Ophé has um, this kind of star scar on his head, and his Ophé has kind of a, just a scar on his uh, left eye. And I thought that was a cool touch. But um, again, like I said, if I would have drawn them, and design them, I would design them with more monster werewolf like heads, and I think that would look cool. But, um, you know, it, it is what it is now. When drawing something from far away, you really got to be careful on how much detail you don't add. Um, less is more in this case. So, I know some, some artists, what they'll do is they'll actually try to draw the detail larger and then shrink it down. But most of the time, you know, by the time you 
when you look at that and what it looks like from the size you're viewing it at, it, don't, it doesn't look right. And here I decided her arm shouldn't be to the side. Her arm should be straight down, holding on to the rein. Her other arm can be like kind of loose, which is fine. It's out to the side, but at least one arm should be holding on to the reins, you know, otherwise it's, you know, it's like, how is she balancing herself on, on the Obfe? And that's what the whole point of those leather straps are around them in the, in the first place is to give the rider something to sit on and hold on to. Um, I added her backpack uh, straps there. Um, so I almost forgot them, but then I remembered, oh yeah, that's right. She, she's always wearing her backpack, unless her backpack's like in her hand or on her side or something like that. So when you're reducing the face here, um, you got to really think about just base, make as very little detail as possible, but enough to where you can kind of see what it is. And, and that, that, that means, you know, you're not going to be able to draw eyelashes and all that kind of stuff like that. You're just going to draw the basic structure of the eye, the basic structure of the mouth, really just like two lines. So the mouth is all you need. And I show how to do this um, in my course I'm working on right now, which is how to draw pretty comic faces. And that course will be available soon. If you want to be notified when it's, when it's coming out, just go to my website, masterpaintingnow.com. Again, the link to my site is in the description of this video. And I'll also I'll link to it in the actual video itself as cards and as annotations. And just click on that. It'll take you to the website. And then just sign up for the newsletter. If you sign up for my newsletter, I don't spam it. I, matter of fact, I hardly ever send newsletters out ever. Um, so the only things I usually send out to you are either a really cool free course, or not free course, but a really cool free tutorial that I did that I thought was really neat. And uh, so I'll send that out to you just to make sure you guys get it because YouTube doesn't always notify people. And then the other thing is if I come out with a new book, which I've only come out with one art book so far, so it's not like I come out with them very often because I don't have time to work on them. And then when I come out with a new course and I don't come out with those all that often either. So um, I definitely don't spam you. Um, yeah, so what I decided to go with her eyes here, um, I'm trying different eyes out right now, trying to figure out what would look correct and what looks, based not, what, not necessarily what looks correct, but what captures the look I'm going for. And what I decided to go with is one eyebrow down, one eyebrow up, and using small pupils to really convey that look of her eyes being rolled, but without it looking goofy. Because if you look at a video of someone rolling their eyes, like a movie where someone rolls their eyes, it looks cool. Um, but if you look at a still image and try to try to capture that look with any still image, like to take the movie and pause it and go frame by frame, they all look retarded. There's not one frame that, that looks cool. And some, you know, that, that was the hardest part here is trying to make it look cool. And I think I finally captured it um, at the end here. Now I'm going to go ahead and ink it, ink it and then the, the video will be done. Because I made her mouth more closed and not as open, I have to also close the jaw. Remember, when your mouth opens and closes, it cl open and closes with your lower jaw. Your upper face doesn't move. Uh, just look at a skeleton a skull and you're going to see how, how it works. And uh, here I'm chesting out both mouths now. I already know how I want the eyes. Now I'm just like, what mouth expression uh, looks better to really convey that look? And I decide this mouth here definitely conveys that look more of just like, whatever, be serious, you know, like that, that kind of feeling. So there it is. And then now this is all about inking. And the inking doesn't take very long. So this is going to go by pretty fast. <clears throat> matter of fact, it didn't take me very long to ink this in real time. And so in sped up time, it's going to go by much, much faster. And so as this finishes out, I'm inking, I'll finish out with this again. Check out my book, which is How to Draw Awesome Figures on Amazon. Again, it's still a bestseller in its category of figure drawing. And then also check out my free graphic novel, which is End of All. You can go to endofallcomic.com or just go to masterpaintingnow.com. And then you'll see that at the top there, I have a link to my comic, which is End of All. And also sign up for my newsletter if you want to be notified when I come out with my courses or really cool tutorials like this one here. And that's it. So thank you for watching. And we'll go ahead and let this last part here finish off as I do the inking. Inking is something I do plan on making a, a tutorial on. If not a tutorial, maybe a, a short course because uh, it's really important. And this is, we're getting right down to the end now. So I'm going to go ahead and say my final goodbyes. See y'all later. Um, comment. Let me guys know. Or let me know what you guys like to see in the future for tutorials here on the YouTube channel. And just about finished. I decided I want that hair kind of looping down, like falling with gravity. So I just changed the shape a little bit.
and you're about to see the ending.